All right, what's up, everybody? Shalom, shalom. I apologize for not being on as often. Uh, I lost my grandfather last week, and or I'm sorry, the week before last, and uh, I've been playing catch up all week and just kind of dealing with the morning process and whatnot. So, thank you guys for being patient with me. Um, today's lesson, what we're going to talk about is how to link objects um, inside a 3D Studio Max and uh, really how to set something up for export. So uh, I had some questions in class which I thought were very relevant and, um, and uh, amazingly valid, you know. Like, so the question was, you know, I have a sword for my character and do I attach the sword to the character or what's the proper way of going about it inside of like the process? So let's pretend for a second. Actually, I got a sword. Let's just uh, let's just use one of my own swords. So, so I get, here's the first step, right? Let's get your sword into the scene. And uh, for those of you who've had my classes and, and see, have seen my teachings before, you'll know that uh, everything that I do is essentially one meter or a hundred centimeters. So that means my character's a hundred centimeters, my sword's a hundred centimeters. That's usually the rule that uh, I was brought up in. Um, I know nowadays they just kind of build the scale uh, and uh, they kind of go from there, but um, I'm, I'm a bit old school in that re regard. So let's go ahead and find us a sword. So let's go find me a sword. Let's pull one from Monster Caravan and uh, you guys will see one of the, uh, the weapons I've done a while back. You'll probably see it and like, hey, it kind of looks familiar and it is. But uh, still consider a bit of my own creation. So here's the weapon. All right, and honestly, it's approximately the right size. So uh, let's just go ahead and and uh, attach this up. So the way this works is uh, I, I typically create a dummy object. Now in the industry, these dummy objects are also known as uh, helpers. They're known as action items they're known as sockets. So what I've done is I've taken this socket and I'm going to switch it over to local axis so you guys can see what's going on. Well, currently the axis, you'll see it's Z forward and Y up opposed to uh, Z up and Y forward. Um, and what we, it, it isn't going to matter but uh, at the moment, but I do want you to see how it will, will matter in engine. So I'm going to take the socket object, I'm going to take my align tool, and I'm going to highlight the palm of my character's hand. And I want to align it X, Y, and Z. And I'm going to I'll go ahead and align it to center, so pivot to center, and then also X, Y, and Z in rotation. So now it's facing the same exact direction as the palm, but it's not linked. So when the character animates, you know, he's still punching through it or whatever. And I know that this, this animation is not the best example because he's not sword fighting but the idea again is how do I put a weapon in the character's hand so uh, once you have the socket in the proper location there's a link button here okay it says select and link and I like to hit the space bar and what that does is it locks the selection and I can click and drag and you'll see this wire come out now you don't have to do that you, but so what you would have to do is click on the object and drag it to the place you want to so I have a tendency, like I said, I can, this way I can click anywhere and just drag it straight to the palm. And so now when he punches, he's, he's using that socket object. And let's also go ahead and name it. So we're going to name this socket underscore R. So this is the right-handed socket. Okay. Now what happens if you have uh, leg armor or a knife that you want to put in a boot or if you have a pauldron you want to put on that, that doesn't necessarily have to have uh, skeletal mesh or if you want to add you know a helmet uh, just name your sockets accordingly that's all so this is a socket hand R you know that'll work and then uh, what if you want to put one on the left hand yeah go, go ahead and do it so we'll just go ahead and copy this and we'll call this L all right we'll go ahead and do another align like so align pivot to center X Y and Z rotation okay and you'll see, like, look, this is Z down now. And then what is this one? This is Z up. Why? Because the rotation changed. So here's here's how you know whether it's right. Oh, by the way, I did not link it to the hand. So look. Uh, <laughs> what's funny is because I copied it, 
it's using the link. If I hit page up, it's using the link from that hand. So we need to switch hands. So let's go ahead and switch it. There we go. So now, there we go. Perfect. So now if I take the sword, okay, and I align the sword to the socket and I do pivot to pivot, X, Y, and Z, you'll notice that the sword is rotated funky funky, right? And that is telling you what the pivot point over here is doing of the uh, of the dummy. So I'm going to take the link button and I'm going to link the sword to the socket. All right. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and rotate the socket. I do not have to use the animation tool, uh, you know, the animation mode to rotate because I'm not animating. I'm actually just trying to set up my orientation. So I'm going to go 90 degrees this way. Come on, 90. All right, let's uh, change the the degrees. Now, previous lessons, if you rotate on the angle snap tool, you'll be able to change the angle. We can go ahead and set this to like five degrees and it'll be a little easier. So, okay, there's 90 degrees there. There's 90 degrees here. All right. And then now what I want to do is even though that the sword is right where it's supposed to be, I want to put it close to his hand. So it looks like he's grabbing it. Okay, so, and then, you know, of course, I'd have to change the animation a bit to, to compensate. But for the most part, this is about the location of where it should be. Now, why do I do it like this? The answer is, if you noticed, let's go ahead and unlink this sword. I'm going to copy it real quick. All right, so if I move it back to origin, got to get it off local axis in order to move it. And then unlink it. Okay. This is the unlink button. And then also I want to reset the rotation. So let's get this off local axis as well. Okay. What I had was the sword was facing this direction. And what I should have done is reset the X form like so. Okay. Resetting the X form will force the transformation gizmo and the sword to be reset to this position. So all my swords, all my weapons are always facing Z forward. So if I hit F on the viewport, the blade tip is facing the camera. It's facing me. So if I go to left view, all my weapons, every time I export, it's all doing that. Plus, I want to make sure that wherever the player's hand will grip, it's always right here. Okay, that's, that's how I make sure. So if I wanted the player's hand to be here, then I would do that. So let's just do that. Let's go ahead and put it about right there. And then I would have to move the pivot point. So if you go to pivot, so you have to affect hierarchy, uh, affect pivot only, and then I would move the pivot point to zero, zero, zero. I would reset the X form, okay? And that's, and I would export the sword just like this. So let's go ahead and export it out. File, export, export selected, okay? And I mean, I could have exported out over here. So it's um, WP for weapon, uh, melee, it's a melee weapon. So always do melee arranged. Uh, it's a two-handed weapon, it's a sword, it's a great sword, and then the name of it is Oblivion, the Oblivion weapon. Okay, and I can do an underscore zero zero if I wanted to, and that's how I do it. Okay, and then I can go ahead and do units, centimeters, animation, there's no animation, smoothing groups, and then I hit OK. Okay, and then it exported out, no problems. Um... So, by the way, I should save this because I know it's an example, but we'll call this Weapon Setup. All right. So, uh, and again, when I did File Export, I exported Selected. So, I only had the sword selected and therefore it just exported the one, the one piece, okay? And sorry for the commercials down here. All right, so um, now what about the sword that's in his hand? Now, just to let you know, the idea is that this sword in the scene is only supposed to be, it's supposed to help me animate, but I don't actually export the sword with the character. I, I just showed you how to export the sword out. So let's say I did all my animation. Uh, I, I don't need the sword anymore. I'm just going to delete the sword out. And with this socket here and with this other socket on the other side, I'm going to do a file export and export my animation, just like I would normally. Now, by the way, let's back up a little bit. 
I'll, I'll go over that part of the lesson again. One thing is, is a good idea, even if I duplicate this sword here, okay? Let's just duplicate it, all right? And so shift dragging will copy. You can also hit control V to copy it. I'm gonna align it. I'm gonna do another align tool to this. And so I, I didn't set this socket up either. And this socket's important. Now also, just to inform you, I changed the pivot point of the other sword. You know, we changed that. So maybe we'll just get rid of this one and go to this. So look, the pivot point changed. So let's just go ahead and copy two of them. Goes on and on and on. All right, let's just go ahead and save this up. Okay, so I can hit Control V. Now I got two swords and I'm gonna go ahead and align it here. Okay, pivot to pivot, X, Y, Z. And I'll take this sword, and I'll, it doesn't matter which which pose I'm in. I, 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 can, I can get the picture, right? And so I'm going to go ahead and link this to this. I'm going to link this to this. All right. And so if I ever will rewind it, okay. So now what i got to do is I've got to... Now what if I want the, the character's hand to, to hold it upside down? Well, then I actually set the socket the right way. Okay, but I don't. So let's go rotate this 180 degrees. Okay. I will export every single sword that I do in the same way. 100% the same exact way. Okay. This is going to be 90 degrees here. So I like to move on the local axis too. Kind of helps me frame things up a little bit more. Okay. And then maybe something like that. All right. Now I'll, I'll do something in a separate video about how to do two-handed weapons because again, this, this demonstration is more for one-handed and it looks really funny. You know, this is totally unintentional. I'd have to fix the poses and all that for this, but you know what, to be honest guys, like, this is, this is correct. This is all exactly how I would do it normally. Okay. And then uh, when I go to export, I just delete the weapons out and then do file. No, notice I don't have anything selected. There's nothing selected here. I don't have anything reset for my X forms. There's nothing here. Okay. File, export. And then I export my animation out. So for those of you who haven't seen other videos, um, I'll go ahead and uh, just go ahead and export this out. Whoops. Array 3D and then humans. There's my base mesh. Animations, export. So this is attack 01. And yes, if I have to split it up into clips, I have to split it up into clips. That's just the way it goes. If that's what I have to do, that's what I have to do. All right. So, but this is just a quick example. So make sure animation's turned on, units. Okay, good. And then hit okay. And then there we go, just let it let it bake. It always throws an error, likes throwing errors, but there we go. Now, now our bones are a part of the geometry here. So, um, now let's say, let's say for example that, well, you know what, let's stop this video and then we'll go into the next one. How about we do that? Okay, so that's, that's the end of this clip. I've shown you how to link objects. I showed you how to export the sword separately and I taught you how to export the animation separately with sockets on it. Okay, we'll come back here in a second and redo a new video.